So the ICRP has changed these values a little bit over the years, not very much, honestly. Current values are shown in this table uh, in ICRP publication. 60 alpha particles, as I mentioned a minute ago, or 20. At almost all other kinds of radiation we're going to deal with, the radiation weighting factor is 1. So a rad equals a rem and a gray equals a sievert. For neutrons, it's a very complex uh, function of energy, and neutrons are absolutely unimportant in internal dose calculations, so we won't talk about them anymore. All you really have to remember is that for radiation protection purposes, the ICRP says 20. I will tell you uh, as a hint of what's to come that that's a very conservative upper estimate, and that in reality, uh, that number for most applications is closer to five, but we'll get to that later. If you're protecting radiation workers, you have to use these numbers. And for the doses we're dealing with, even if it's an overestimate, that's okay. So what's this one equation I want you to learn? Okay, here's an object uniformly contaminated with radioactive material. So in our case, that's going to be an organ, like a thyroid or a liver or something. But we can calculate absorbed dose to anything in the world, including non-biological materials like water, air, concrete. Uh, we're only interested in organs here. But we have this object, and we're going to assume it's uniformly contaminated, and that's generally a good assumption even in nuclear medicine therapy. Now, there are, of course, exceptions, but let's just make it simple. So we have an object. Let's say it's a thyroid or a liver. It has a certain amount of radioactive material in it. What quantities do we need to calculate energy and mass? Well, here is the basic dose rate equation, and it really isn't that complicated when you think about it. We need energy. We're going to divide by the mass of the object. We need to know how much activity is in the object. So microcuries or megabecquerels, if you will. Every time you have a disintegration, you get a particle or a photon of a given energy with a given abundance, number of radiations with energy E emitted per nuclear transition. It's not always 100%, is it? Sometimes it is. Um, P32 betas, yttrium-90 betas, for instance, are almost exactly 100%. They get one beta per disintegration, but everything else, uh, most other cases, it's less than one. So there you have the disintegrations per time, the energy per disintegration, divided by the mass. There you have it, energy per unit mass. Now there's one other thing here. Um, if we go back to this picture, you might notice that some of the radiations that are emitted in here may escape the organ. So even though you got a certain amount of energy emitted, was it all absorbed? Not necessarily. Was it absorbed in other places? Possibly. So we have this, this factor called the absorbed fraction that says what fraction of the energy emitted that's E, how much was emitted, was absorbed. Now, for instance, for um, we'll talk very frequently about iodine in the thyroid. It's a nice, easy example. But when you have a beta particle emitted in the thyroid, it's almost 100% absorbed in the thyroid, and that's all there is to it, game over. Most other radionuclides, for instance, technetium-99M, a diagnostic uh, uh, Pharmaceutical, uh, that's a nuclide that's attached to many pharmaceuticals, is 140 keV photon, and a lot of it is escapes uh, even small organs, and then it can strike other organs. So energy emitted, energy absorbed per unit mass, we're done. Except we got to get our units right. So there's this factor K that gives you uh, the conversion factor between if you have, for instance, energy in, I'm going to speak in SI units as much as possible, uh, activity in megabecquerels, 
um, mass in kilograms, energy in MeV, this will convert <clears throat> all those units into gray, and we'll see an example here in a second. So E is the energy emitted from a source. That factor phi is the fraction of energy absorbed in any target. The source, of course, will be a target, but other targets will be out there. Now, it's very important you get your units right. Again, the concepts here are pretty simple, right? Energy per unit mass. But there's a lot of unit conversions that have to go on. For example, if we want the dose in gray per second, <clears throat> and we have megabecquerels of activity, MeV per energy, and kilograms per mass, well, um, a million disintegrations per second per megabecquerel, right? Uh, a gray is a joule per kilogram. How many joules are in an MeV? 1.6 10 to the minus 13th. And if we want to go to, uh, we said gray per second, I'm going here to milligray per second, that's fine. The factor turns out to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4, but you got to get that right. Um, for instance, if you uh, put this 10 to the minus 13th, in the denominator, when it should have been in the numerator, your answer will be wrong by a factor of 10 to the 26th. So keeping these units straight is difficult. That's why I use horizontal lines so I can see very easily what cancels with what. And in the older units, if you had activity in microcuries, energy in MeV, mass in grams, I won't go through all the details here but your factor is 2.13 to get your dose rate in rad per hour. So now we have rad per hour or gray per second or whatever you wish. Now apply radiation weighting factor to get REM and Sievert is easy. We saw that before, and that's pretty trivial. All right, dose rate is interesting because we're starting with activity as disintegrations per second. We're not usually interested only in absorbed dose rate. There are times where this is important, and we'll see this in the radiation biology uh, lecture. Usually, we just want an estimate of total integrated absorbed dose over time. For radiation workers, which is not the subject of this course, but it, it's exactly the same units, exactly the same equation. <clears throat> but in nuclear medicine, we usually as well just want to know how much total dose are the different organs going to get if we give this many megabecquerels of activity. So we started with a time-dependent equation, dose rate. To get to cumulative dose, we have to integrate the dose rate equation. And again, people get kind of, oh, it's calculus. That's hard. No, it's not hard. Um, but we're going to integrate that. Now, fortunately, the only factor that usually varies over time is activity. Activity goes down over time. Everything else is constant. So all we got to do is integrate the time activity curve. And very cleverly, many, many years ago, the MIRD committee developed a term called A tilde, because it looks like it's got a little integral sign over it, doesn't it? That's cute. And so when you integrate the time activity curve, you get this term that's called A tilde cumulated activity, microcurie hours or megabecquerel seconds. And that is total number of disintegrations, as we'll show next. And now you have a total integrated dose equation. And that's it. OK, that is the only equation you need to know. Now, there are parts of the equation we'll have to investigate further, but this is it. That's the equation. All the other systems are based on this simple equation. If you understand this equation, you understand internal dosimetry. And we could quit now, but of course there's more to do. <laughs> now, if you look at the time activity curve, it's usually not a straight line, but who cares? This is just a concept graph. So you have activity on the vertical axis, disintegrations per second. 